We're going to be doing something a little bit different today. And now for something completely different. Today, instead of using lumber, we're going to make some lumber. I bought a ripping chain from Granberg. I uh, just got to put on the chainsaw. I'll go over the differences between a ripping chain and a regular chain. And then we're going to make some cuts with it and see how it does, see if it was worth the money. I'm pretty excited. So let's see what happens. So here's a comparison of the chains. This first one is the one that was on my chainsaw. It's a skip tooth, sharpened to about 35 degrees on the teeth. Great for cross cutting, which is mostly what you do. But when you're going to be ripping, you want one with it's about 10 degrees. It's got the two, you can see them thinner scoring teeth right here. And then the bigger raker teeth in front of it. Here's a tree I had taken down in my backyard. It's a white oak, uh, and this is going to be the first one I'm slabbing up. So I get the edges cleaned up, I get it painted, uh, and then I get my rails mounted to it. Uh, the mill itself is what's attached to the chainsaw here. Uh, it's got two clamps that clamp the bar uh, close to the motor and then all the way down here at the end that hold it at a set elevation the entire time that you're cutting. So you need a flat reference. But once you have a flat reference, this will do all the work. This just rides across the top and slabs out boards. Here's the first pass. The trick here is to not take very much off, just enough to get your flat surface and save the rest of it for usable lumber. So here's the whole purpose of the rails. You start off with a round log, you have to mount the rails to it or some type of rail, 2x6, 2x8, whatever. But now I can remove this section here and I have a flat surface for the rest of this mill to ride for the rest of my cuts. I don't have to use anything else, just let the mill do all the work. So even this early in, I could tell that the ripping chain was substantially better than a cross-cut chain. We get a little jaded with marketing sometimes and assume they're hyping up something that's not really all it's cut out to be. But a ripping chain, in my experience, was way, way better. All right, excuse my heavy breathing because I'm fat and out of shape. You can really see on this oak, the medullary rays came out of this one great. So once this one does end up drying and I can actually clean it up, it's going to be about two years. But once it's finally dry and I can finally start working on it, this one's going to turn out really, really nice. Here's another little trick. If you're milling, uh, set it at an incline and start at the high end and let gravity do all the work. This is me just holding the trigger down and basically <laughs> letting gravity pull this saw down the hill and cut this slab for me. If you ain't cheating, you ain't trying. So, and so they're trying hard. <laughs> At this point, I thought I may have overhyped this ripping chain. Uh, I noticed it's slowing down, so I kind of had to take a step back and, and figure out, do I just need to sharpen it or what? So this is a sight that you never want to see. That was definitely a nail. And there was another one right here, a little bit easier to see where he was. So that was why my chain got so dull so fast. A uh, friendly reminder that I should use the metal detector that I bought and stop using it as a wall decoration. Now comes the really, really unfun part. Um, I've made about six cuts with it. I have to sharpen it. I took it out of the mill and I'm going to spend probably about 20 or 30 minutes sharpening it now. So just to give an example, I've got this sharpening guide that has the common angles for chains on it. You can see the difference here. If I hold this up, if I were to sharpen this at 30, that would be about how the file would be sitting. But these are getting sharpened closer to about right here. That's, that's the tooth difference in this. It's that sharp versus about that flat. Now is a great time for a sharpening montage. Gonna need a montage. If you're ever sharpening longer chains and you're pea-brained like I am, mark the first tooth you start on. It really helps you not to sharpen any of the teeth twice when you come back around. This section of the video may as well be an infomercial for a bandsaw mill uh, of some type. 
this is me fighting this mill to get it back in line, to get all of the things to set back up. I've been using the chainsaw tool to do all of this, but now I can't get it to fit anymore. I have to go get a socket set to reset the chain, refill the container. It's just, just if you do this a lot, do yourself a favor, just buy a bandsaw mill. Making your own lumber at home, there's a lot of steps that go into it. You do save money, but you still have to be diligent, otherwise half the lumber comes out as a waste anyway. The first thing that you have to do uh, is paint the ends of the boards so that it dries evenly. You've got to spray it. I've got a sprayer loader loaded full of timbor here to spray all this down, keep the bugs from eating it up. Uh, you have to stack and sticker it so that it will get adequate airflow and dry. And I'm even removing the bark on this because I noticed some termites. Um, and so I want it to dry out faster and get rid of all of those as fast as possible so they don't chew up any of the, any of the wood that's usable. Uh, there's still a lot of steps to it. Still definitely worth it. The very last step is to spray all of it down with the tin borer and sticker it and wait. <laughs> wait about three years, honestly, for any of this to be ready. Thanks for checking it out. I'll put a link to the chain that I bought from Grandberg. Obviously this is not sponsored. I am way too small of a fish for that, but uh, it did really well. And if you're ever into milling with a chainsaw, I think it's worth a look. It's not super expensive. It did a great job. It made it much more enjoyable.